All right, parts. We're gonna break parts out into five different sections. Battery, hub drive motor and wheel, controller, brakes, and everything else. So batteries. If you've done any research, you can find there's so many different opinions on batteries. You can watch videos all day long on what to use. Based on value, I've chose to go with China Cell batteries. I did the research I could do on these. I checked the factory, the specs, talked to people that have used them, and ultimately have had good experience with these. So the specs on the BMS and the battery I'm using, it has a 50 amp average discharge rate, 120 amp peak rate, and a four amp charge rate. Not bad, they're 72 volt batteries. Let's check them out. This is a 30 amp hour battery. The wiring sequence goes from the battery, through a fuse, then the contactor, then the controller. The other bike has a 35 amp hour battery. The runtime difference is anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how you ride it. The rear hub and wheel, it's an NBP 72 volt, 3000 watt rear hub. It's mounted to a 17 inch, 1.6 wide wheel. I have these on both bikes. They work really well, no issues. It definitely performs better with the Sabaton controller. The YF, it tends to get a little bit hot. My controller is here under the seat. I'll show you it a bit later, but it's the Sabaton 80 amp controller. When you buy the rear motor, it comes with a controller, so you can spec which one you want. It also comes with the display, you can spec that. Comes with a throttle, comes with brakes we're not gonna use, and a few other parts. So the brakes. Well, I've done a big improvement on this bike from the blue bike. This bike has the motorcycle brakes. The biggest two parts to overcome was an adapter to go from the six hole mountain bike uh, to the four hole motorcycle, and also a caliper mount. On my old bike, I've got mountain bike style brakes. So this is a mountain bike caliper. I welded a bracket here for that caliper and it's got a six bolt mountain bike style rotor. This bike fades really bad. When you get going fast and you cram these brakes on, they heat up and you don't get a lot out of it. So this was a huge improvement. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this whole process. It's great. So beyond that, it's all the other parts. Well, you need a lot of parts. You need a front wheel. This front wheel right here, uh, it was very difficult to do. I put it on my blue bike. Um, the way that it's configured, it's larger. And the way that it comes out, it comes out in reverse. So the cable comes out in reverse. So I don't recommend buying one of these. I've been able to source a more factory style where you have to use the old brake parts but it bolts right up. The only thing you have to do is you have to shorten uh, the axle spacers a bit, but it's great. This is also a 17 inch. Uh, this is a 1.4 wide uh, wheel, so it's a little bit skinnier in the back because the back is a 1.6, but it's a really easy conversion. Other important parts you're gonna need, brakes, right? We talked about that, but you're gonna need the brake levers. You're gonna need hydraulic motorcycle style. I buy these levers with the switch for the rear brake already incorporated in it. So basically what this does is when you pull it, uh, it lights the brake up once you have it all wired together. For the cable lever, uh, I buy a similar one with the switch already incorporated in it. So I wire these two together. When you pull on it, you get a brake light. So that's a great improvement. I upgrade the bars to a Speedway style bar. That's a cool improvement over the taller bars that typically come with the bikes. Again, the controller, I'm sorry, the display, that comes when you buy the controller and the rear wheel. Uh, brake parts that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a front cable, you're gonna need a rear hydraulic line, uh, the rear caliper and mount, which we'll talk about more later. You're gonna need things like a horn. And this spacer here, this typically cracks. Uh, it's, a, it's a cover and spacer for the headset, so I just buy that new. Uh, other items that you're gonna need. So you need to charge the bike. This is an external charge port. Uh, on my blue bike, I have a cable that you have to plug in. So basically you remove the side cover, um, plug in the cable and charge it. On my gray bike, uh, you flip this open, plug it in, charge it. It's a much cleaner option. You're gonna need things like a key switch if you wanna go that route. And if you're gonna go the key switch route, you'll need a contactor. This was the single biggest improvement I made but from the first bike to the second bike, I added this contactor, and this allows for uh, a keyless disconnect 
of the battery to the motor so it doesn't bleed off. On my blue bike, I actually have to pull the side cover off and disconnect it if I want to disconnect that whole system. You're going to need some switches for all your lights. Uh, which ones are you going to use? Are you going to use a all-in-one style with the horn, turn indicator, and lights? Or are you going to do like I did on the gray bike where I have some independent switches to try and clean it up and simplify it a bit? Uh, what wiring are you going to do? You know, specifically what lights are you going to have? LED, non-LED, turn indicators, no turn indicators. Some states require the turn indicators. Nevada actually doesn't on this old bike. You're going to need a turn indicator switch. If you use an old style rear brake light, um, you'll probably want to upgrade it to LED as I did. You'll need a uh, reducer from 72 volts to 12 volts. So that's important to run all your lighting. And then what's, what uh, plugs are you going to use? I use the um, y, YT90 plugs. Those work pretty well, but you have a lot of options. Uh, you might need to use a junction box depending on the run from your your motor to your controller and where that's actually going to be. Um, fuse if your battery doesn't come with a fuse. And then other parts you're going to need to buy new. Uh, these parts are some accessories, um, side covers, you can get cowlings for the bikes, foot pegs, um, bushings for the swing arm if you need that, head badge, racks, and all kinds of other things. Um, shocks, there's a few different options for the shocks out there. And then what paint you're going to use. You know, and the paint really, you know, gives the bike the overall look. If you're spending good money to buy all these parts and put a cool bike together, I recommend using a two-part paint rather than a rattle can in the bike. Tires and tubes, a uh, really important part. You know, this gives the bike a finished look. Originally on my gray bike here, I bought this Michelin tire, and when you mount it up, it actually comes out really skinny. Um, based on you know the sidewall and how it fits so I scrapped that idea and found some better tires for that We're going to be going over uh, Your battery box, you know and how you build your battery box how that all gets assembled uh, I typically buy all new bolts for the bikes for everything that I can find and then your foot pegs I use this round stock. That's a real simple solution